Hello, hello, and welcome to FinSuite Live. Today, we are talking about free product marketing. And what this means is creating free products, creating resources, creating tools that you offer for free as a marketing strategy. I like to think of traditional marketing as paying for advertisements or paying for, paying for ads, really, to get your work your business in front of other people. And I think Webflow has given us the unique opportunity to actually create the products and tools and resources and, and information that we can use to market our business. So that's what this is all about. Uh, when I say product, I mean resource, I mean tool, I mean info, ebook, whatever. Whatever you want to give away for free, that's your marketing strategy. And this is something that FinSuite has done for years. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to share some really early projects. We have some great products and resources for the, Fins for the Webflow community today, but it wasn't always like that. We always had cool stuff, but it wasn't always as good as it is today. There's been a lot of iterations. So we're gonna look at that early stuff and really show you that this applies to anybody. It applies to established businesses, new businesses, freelancers, companies, whatever. So that is what the episode is about. Let's get the comments open and let's see who is here today. Let's bring up some of the lovely audience and say hello. Hello, Mike from Scottsdale, Arizona. Magdalena, what's up? How's it going? Nice. We have Dale Jensen. Hello, Pablo Cortez. Hello, hello. Great. Zach Bujasia, how are you doing? Sean Duval, hello, hello. Really nice to see all this, all the the regulars here. I, I love you guys. Thanks. Rod Trippin, John Matias, hello, hello. Nice, Mika Moshviker. Hello, we're going to share your project at the end of the episode. Really great in the Webflow community. Javi, what's up? Okay, let's get into this. And one more, we have Steve, Steve Turnbull. And of course, we must say hello to Penny. Excellent. Okay, let's now get into announcements. Announcements. Pro meeting tomorrow. If you're a pro, you should be there. We're giving an early announcement about a new category of FinSuite products. That's all I'm going to say now. But at the pro meeting, you'll get a little bit more about that. We have a big announcement coming later this month. And yeah, pros, pros not only hear about it first, but they're actually going to get some really, really nice benefits for that. So we'll talk about that tomorrow. Next is Query Param. Query Param is launching on Tuesday. Awesome. So next Tuesday, we're going to do a live build. And the live build is going to be 30 minutes of Query Param and 30 minutes of social share. This is going to be next Tuesday. This is FinSuite Day, and we have decided that we're actually going to do a little bit more hands-on learning live builds. We'll still have these kind of presentation, strategy, growth, business type episodes, but we also want to do more learning, more education. So next Tuesday, 30 minute social, 30 minute query param, and this is when query param launches. This is the, the release of query param. This is going, this is super simple to use first. And what it's going to allow you to do is take a query parameter from a URL and use it as the value for a form input or a text element on the page. So you can submit hidden info through your form, through the query params. You can place text on the page, welcoming the user in a custom way. We're going to go over that tomorrow, uh, next Tuesday with our shit. It's going to be really, really nice. This is super marketing e. So if you want to offer more marketing services, this is a really good place to start. This solution came 
from a lot of our client requests. And of course, the pros voted for it. Okay. And we're doing more of those, more live builds. We love them. Okay. And last of the announcements, state of flow. We are three weeks away of state uh three weeks away to state of flow and i am very excited for it we will have victoria from finsuite at state of flow i will be at state of flow and finsuite will be a sponsor of state of flow very exciting i'm really really happy about this event what the community is doing around this event and you should definitely get your tickets if you have not already cool all right, I think that's it for announcements. Now let's get into this show content. And let me do a quick check here on the comments. Great, live builds are always welcome. Thank you, Penny. Yes, Dale, this does sound intriguing. Very nice. Mika, goodbye type form. Not yet. I don't think goodbye type form yet. I think this is kind of a something I want to say for FinSuite in the next year or so, year or two. But right now, query param, super simple. Going to give you a really nice added bonus to add on to your clients. But I like where your head's at, Mika. That's nice. Okay, cool. Let's get into this free benefits for free product benefits for sales and marketing. Why would we want to give away things for free? A lot of people are very confused when FinSuite gives things away for free. Why are you not charging for this? You can charge for it. You can make money. Well, there's a few reasons, and these are kind of the topics that we're going over today. First, we want to create excitement for the end user. This is important, whether it's sales or marketing just this little added bit of excitement towards you and towards your brand. We want to show knowledge and we want to show skill. Usually when we're creating a free product and we're releasing it, it's showing some knowledge or skill. Just the idea of making it, the ability to make it is very powerful. And when people see that, you already have some level of, hey, this person knows what they're doing. Position yourself as a professional. Well, I made this resource and other people use it and clients love it and the community loves it. So people will see me as a professional because I am leading the profession. Other people that are in this professional space are using this tool or this resource or this content. And last, learn what people want. This is incredibly important. Once you really start to understand what people want, you can then create better products and better resources and reach better clients because you understand what people want and then you deliver what people want. So we'll talk about this iteration process towards the end. And remember, this is for any size business. This could be for a big business, a medium business, a tiny business, a one person business. You can do this at any level. And later, we're going to go through the FinSuite examples, the, the past things that we've released. And we released these as a small company, very small company. And as we grew, as we matured, we learned what people want and we iterated and we iterated. So you can really jump into this marketing strategy at any step. You do not need to be this established company with established products and established resources. Okay, now, any questions, please, Ask any questions along the way. Uh, if you have resources to share, share them. If you have products that you have built or managed or use as any kind of marketing or sales, share those in the comments. Would love to bring them up at the end of the episode. Okay, now, free product. I want to make this clear that this does not mean a SaaS product. You don't have to create this massive complex system that does this amazing thing. That's not what this is about. When we talk about free product in this context, I'm talking about information, resource, uh, a tool, or a complete product. And this can be of any size. Uh, we, we talked about any size of your freelance or agency. It could also be any size of project. So it could be a little tiny tool that helps you add a cool email signature. 
to Gmail. It could be a tool that um, helps you better format rich text in Webflow. Uh, it could be anything, right? It, or, or an ebook, an ebook of how you do brand strategy. Any of this is now what we're calling free product in the context of this episode. Okay. Uh, oh, and let me read through some of these. I, I made a list of some things that could apply. Blog post, how-to article, educational content, checklists, guides, videos, tutorials, a solution to a challenge, like something for rich text, uh, something that helps you achieve an end result with less steps. So this could be, um, this could be a tool that helps the client copy and paste information from Airtable to Webflow. Anything, any, any solution that helps you do things in less time or effort. Uh, a solution to fix or improve a process, like your brand strategy, like um, the, the strategy that you recommend for updating content on the website. Here's your website and here's your, your guide to making updates to it. Any kind of workflow stuff. All of this is seen as product. Value, that's a, that's a nice way to put it. Okay, let's get to this create excitement for the end user. When you're creating a resource, one of the big benefits is that somebody will get excited about it. Somebody needs to see this and have a little bit more excitement or a lot more excitement working with you because of the free product. This could be in the lead stage. This could be in the sales stage. This could be in your marketing flow that when people use this product, they look at your company just a little bit better and say, wow, this resource is making me like this brand better or this company better. There's some excitement around the use of this. There's some value that's given in the use of this. And this will create a strong connection between the brand and the end user. This is a lot of what we do at FinSuite. This is kind of the start of a lot of our ridiculous content, this idea of exciting the end user. And then the end user is more likely to pick you. So an end user could be like a lead, a client. They're more likely to pick you or continue to doing, continue doing work with you. Or in a marketing sense, this could be a person using the product, like someone in the community. And now we're starting to see people in the community are actually referring business to FinSuite. If they have a big project that they don't think they can take on, sometimes they will send their client to FinSuite and say, hey, this is an agency that I use a lot of tools of. I really value their content. And based on the tools I use, they must be a good agency. We've never worked together before, but I kind of trust them because they do such a good job on this product side. So people are excited about that. Now let's look at some old projects uh, just about creating some excitement. We have this. This was our first client proposal design. And there's, it's likely a couple things in here are a little broken. This was built four or five years ago on I think it's Webflow Interactions 1. This may be an IX1 project. That's how old this is. I don't remember, but it's old. And we created this. I'm scrolling through it right now just to get the client excited about the project. Every single movement in here is interactions. I'm pretty sure this is IX1, which makes it even more impressive. Or maybe it's not. I don't know. Either way, this is... This, it actually worked. This was really cool. When we were an early company and we sent this to clients, people just really enjoyed it. We'd get comments back like, hey, thanks for the proposal. Also, we love that presentation. We love this and this and this. And I really think this helped more people say yes to our proposal because we had all of these kind of ridiculous movements. This really showed... It showed the skill, I'm getting a little ahead of the, the content, but it shows the skill, it shows the professionalism, it shows that we're actually able to do advanced animations. But really, it was all about the excitement. People actually got a little bit excited 
about the proposal, right? This just took hours and hours of interactions. This is one single scrolling page. Pretty cool. So that was an excitement thing. And we actually made a V2 of this. And this is the V2. And this is supposed to be part of a bigger project that if you're interested in Lottie animations, we're going to send this to you and you're going to think, wow, this company is so great with Lottie animations. It's exciting. It makes me happy just looking at it because it's cool. So we did these. And I will say this first one, I think, was a little bit more effective. This one, we have content scrolling on the side. It, it didn't do as good of a job as we thought. It didn't feel like a V2. And sometimes you win in these and sometimes you don't. Uh, you, you really have to understand that when you create these kind of resources and these kind of tools, your intention is for people to value them and see your skill, but it doesn't always happen. Uh, for example, this one, we thought we were going to give a really creative and fun and nice message to our clients, but nobody really liked it. Nobody cared for it. It's not that they didn't like it, but nobody gave us any comments on it. We thought it was cool. This is all Webflow interactions, and this is also Webflow interactions. So we spent so long creating this, and it was for our clients, and they didn't really understand how difficult this was to build. I think people in the Webflow community would understand this. This is pretty cool. This is all Webflow interactions. Pretty sweet. Uh, but yeah, we, we used to try to create these really visual things and they worked for a time. And then we said, hey, we have to really take this up to the next step. We have to do more, more tools, more resources. So this is, I kind of see this as like step one create excitement. Like that's, that's the, the minimum thing you're trying to do. And if you can do this successfully, this kind of strategy can work for you. Exciting is really good for sales and marketing. But really what we want to get to is showing knowledge and skill. I, I kind of see this as the next step to, to this free product marketing mindset that we're exciting users, people love it, but really we want to show that we're knowledgeable and we're skilled in something, in Webflow development, in design, in interactions, in marketing, in SEO, whatever. Whatever kind of resource or tool or information we're giving, we want people to look at it and say, wow, this person knows their stuff. That's the goal. So this is going to naturally display the skills that are required to complete the free resource. Like we just looked at that ridiculous cat scrolling um, plane thing, the rocket ship. This obviously shows that we are good at Webflow interactions. If you need a custom Webflow interaction scene, here it is. This is it. You don't have to look any further. I don't care if it excites you. This is proof that we know how to do this. So let's look at this. This is the very first thing that we released. This was the first public thing. This has been redesigned. It does. It didn't look like this when we released it, but it had the same content. And this was made to show clients that we have a technical ability. At the time, there was a one JavaScript developer at FinSuite, and this JavaScript developer created these scripts for us. So this was a way to show clients, hey, we know what we're talking about. Look at all these scripts. Look at all these things that we're doing on top of Webflow. So if you need something on top of Webflow, or if you need this specifically, look, I'm showing you. So imagine a client comes to you and says, hey, I actually wanted to show the amount of items in the collection list. Great. We actually have this solution, and we've recorded a video for the solution, and it's working right here, so we can do it. You know how powerful that is in the sales process? to solve somebody's problem and show that you solved it right there. Powerful. People are going to love that. They're going to say, wow, I don't have to worry about this because I know that you can do it because I'm seeing it. 
So what this is doing is showing your knowledge and skill. And naturally, you can do this through the resources. So you have the benefit of clients seeing it. You have the benefit of the community seeing it. And your benefit is that other people now know that you have the skill and knowledge to complete this. It, it's like a portfolio item in a sense. And also, this is really important. It naturally proves with an incorrect roves, it naturally proves dedication to an initiative. This one, it shows that you're, you're ready to take a project from start to finish. We see a lot of things in the Webflow community that are started and abandoned. There's no V2, there's no update. It just, it was built and then it's left. And people don't really want that, right? People want up to date. They want updates. They want things that are, are happening. So this proves that you have some dedication and, and initiative to start something and end something, whether that's a white paper, an ebook, uh, a webinar, a, uh, a blog post, whatever. This is going to prove that. So really valuable on the skill side. Next, this is now the next level of these free products. And it's positioning yourself as a professional that not only do you have the skill and knowledge to complete this, but once people start using this, you'll be seen in a, a, a better light. People will say, okay, it's not just a free resource that gives you custom code. It's a, it's a solution for other people. Other people need this and other people are using this. So maybe it's our, it's our, our client. If other clients are using the project management workflow tool that we've built, when I'm talking to a lead and I say, hey, all of our clients are using this project management workflow tool that we created, that lead is going to be much more likely to see me as a professional because I've created this tool that all of our clients are using for maintenance and everybody loves it. And I have a few testimonials. So I'm positioning myself as the professional creating this tool that others want to use. And on the community side, people use this. We get messages weekly about hacks and, and everything daily, of course, of, of all the different tools that we release. So people look at FinSuite now as a leader, as a company that is positioned as a professional in this industry, because we know what people are looking for and we've delivered that. So this is not something that happens right away. When we built this, people weren't thinking that. People weren't thinking that we were professionals in the industry. We got to the level of excitement. It's cool. We got to the level of showing skill, right? No, not everybody knows how to do this. But we didn't really get into the your professional until CMS library. That's the next version of this. Not the next version of this, but it was our initial version of a library in Webflow. And that was, that was the first time that we got to this, position yourself as a professional. So this takes time. I want to make that very clear, that when you're creating these resources and tools and blog posts, it doesn't happen right away. You may have to write 15 blog posts until one of them sticks and everybody loves this blog post. And when your clients read this blog post, they say, wow, this is the company I want to work with because they have this process or this tool or this information that I think is really cool and shows their skill. So be patient with this. We've created a lot and we're just starting to see the true, true benefits of it in the past 12 to 18 months. But if you're serious about this industry and you really want to grow in this industry, you have to start planting these seeds so that they can grow as trees, so that you can replant them somewhere else and come up with the V2. Uh, that's, that's what this is all about. Now, let's look at some other projects. Let's go to the Weeglot project. This one we created, yeah, just to excite you, of course, um, to educate you, to show some value and position ourselves as leaders. Uh, I 
when we created this project, we wanted to create the most amazing skill, the most amazing animation in a scrolling site that we were able to do. And that's really what this, this, what happened here. Uh, this is all Webflow interactions. This is a site that has lots of views, lots of clones. We still have clients coming to us saying, hey, we found you through the Weglot project. Um, and this is, this was a huge win for everybody, for Weglot, for us, totally successful campaign. Uh, but our other animated projects that I showed you before, they didn't have this. They, they were built by even some of the same people, but those didn't hit as well. This one hit. So it took us six different cool projects to build to actually get to this where, where now we say, hey, this was worth it. This is exactly what we wanted to do. We release it as a clonable. We do some education on it. And now, yeah, this is a huge win for everybody. Our clients, the community. Uh, we've had people even say that they, they found Webflow through this. They were interested in Webflow because of this, because they saw how interactive the site can be. So it takes time. Let's look at... You know what? Let's go back to the slides and let's talk about learn what people want. This I think is the most important one of all of them. Learning what people want through this marketing strategy is incredibly important because it's going to allow you to better serve all the people you work with, the community, your clients, your team, you have to release things and do things to know if it's good or not, to know what the V2 looks like, to know what, yeah, let, let's talk about what V2 looks like. Imagine you're working with a client and you have this great process that helps them write their content, deliver it to you, and complete the project very efficiently. If you never try that out on your clients, you won't know if people like this process or don't like this process. So if you learn what they like and what they don't like, you can update it and update it and update it. And then by the end of year two or year three, you may have the most epic process in the entire industry because you've documented it, you've iterated, and you learn what people want. That's what we do. That's what we're trying to do at FinSuite. Create these things for clients. Understand, hey, the heavy animation stuff doesn't really work. It's not what we want to do for our clients. The community stuff like um, Sweet Text. This was a huge success. We rebuilt this. So this was a product that we released. And this was a huge sales tool for us because a lot of clients would say, hey, I want my rich text to look like this or I want our blog to look like this blog. And we can say, this doesn't work natively, but we at FinSuite have built this solution that lets you do anything to your rich text, including interactions and draggable and all these different styles. So we actually use this on sales calls to tell people, hey, we already know what you want. We've learned that all of our clients are asking for this thing. So we've created a solution and we've iterated it and we have iterated it to know this is really valuable to you. We learned what you want. And let's do one more, two more, and then we're going to jump into the comments here. Scroll bar. This was kind of one of our first attempts at creating some type of product. We updated it a few times quietly, but overall it, it really stayed the same. And the reason is we just didn't see a lot of people using it. I thought that everybody would want to use this, but no, not everybody wants to use this and that's fine. So we built it, we made sure there were no bugs and we have now moved on. Lottie Flow, same deal. We wanted to create this product that allowed you to, to get Lottie 
files and customize them. This was when Lottie first kind of got on the web and even Lottie files at the time had a very small library. So I thought, hey, maybe we can be the Lottie provider for Webflow, but no. Quickly realized this was not for us, did not want to do that, but we tried and we put out this resource for everybody to use. We still get a lot of uses on this. There's actually a lot of users that actively use Lottie Flow, but this was something that was not for us. We needed a new iteration because we learned what people want and this was not what most of our target clients and target community wanted. So the reason I'm showing you all of these products is to show you that it doesn't happen right away. This success doesn't happen right away. You're, you're looking at client first, you're looking at attributes, you're looking at um, FinSuite extension. These are all products and tools that we have built after all of these other iterations to know, hey, this is the type of stuff that people want and this is the type of stuff that people don't want. So learning, based on those past projects and now rebuilding and doing really what we know people want, super powerful. This is like, this is how I see the last step of, of this topic of, mar of creating free products and then using that as a marketing strategy. Let's get into the comments here. I completely ignored the comments, which I never like to do, but I did it. So uh, let's, let's get in here. Okay, where do we start? Bra Trippin, let's bring this one up. Early on, has YouTube been a good source of getting qualified clients? Do you recommend it? Absolutely not. No way. Specifically because you've said early on. If you said now is YouTube a good source of getting qualified clients, I'd say yes. But early on, no. We've been recording videos for years, three years, four years, not sure, but it's been years. We have, what, 300 videos or something? It's a lot. And now we're starting to see those results. Last six months, last eight months. But before that, not really. Um, I think Webflow wasn't as big. Uh, and I think FinSuite didn't really have the have this yet. Position yourself as a professional. FinSuite did not have that yet when we first started YouTube. So it took a long time to position us as this and actually have people come back to our YouTube and want to watch our content. So broad tripping, the answer is no. If you're doing YouTube, this has to be a long-term strategy. You cannot go in expecting results immediately. You will be disappointed. Okay, let's bring up from Pablo Cortez. The Webflow hacks were so cool when I just started using Webflow. Totally. We wanted to make these as simple as possible. jQuery, comment on all the code. This is one of the things that really helped me understand how JavaScript work, how JavaScript works and how, how JavaScript can interact with elements in your Webflow project. So Pablo, thanks for that. Um, I'm really glad that it was useful and cool. Okay. Uh, let's bring up Josh Lowe. Just joined. What did I miss? Well, Josh, happy to have you here. Uh, this is all about marketing yourself using free products, free resources, free tools, free information, using that for your clients to give you a better lead pitch to use it for your current clients, to have them keep working with you, to use it for the community, to have the community love you and refer business to you. So this is, it, it's sort of a marketing strategy video, trying to, to look into this Webflow industry and see what we can do to market ourselves without the traditional ad model. Okay, Rohan, I remember I fell in love with FinSuite because of hacks. Wow, nice. Rohan is a very trusted, employee at FinSuite does great work here. So that's good. I guess we can also add to this that the, the free resources and tools may help you grow your team. If you create something really cool and somebody else sees this, they may be willing 
to work with you, or they may need to work with you. I think Rohan came to us needing to work together. There was no option. He was going to work with us. So if you say that you fell in love because of hacks, I would say that's a really nice use case to go and create content like this. And I think I will leave it on here just so we can have this as I'm answering some questions. Okay. Nice. Josh Lowe, just going through the, the proposal website. Wow. This is always what I wanted to create, but more. Yeah, it was cool. Totally a pain in the ass. I mean, you have to create the statement of work in text form. And then again, in the visual form, it was kind of a pain to create, but yeah, it is, there is some effectiveness to it. If you're thinking about it and you're new and you really want to engage with leads, I'd say go for it. It's worth the extra time if you have that resource time. Okay. Arvin, thank you. FinSuite is a leader indeed. I appreciate that. Mika, Webflow Hacks Library saved my ass more than a few times with clients. It allowed me to be confident in raising prices last year. Wow. Love it. This is the community effect. This is why people in the community may see FinSuite as an industry leader because we are giving you these tools that you need in your business. Love it. Okay. What else do we have? Juan Cardona, thank you. For what it's worth, I absolutely love Lottie Flow. It saves me time and headache for small projects. Yeah, that was the goal. Lottie Files has such an amazing and beautiful library. But if you want something really, really simple, at least two years ago, it was kind of hard to find just something really simple. I haven't been there in a while, but we created it because you want a little icon and that's it, done. It was icons only. So good. I'm glad you like that one. Okay. Let's bring this up from Josh. This is nice. Lots of products that you guys pumped out. You must have lots of perseverance to slog through the wins and losses. They're all wins in my opinion. Yeah, so that's this. Naturally proves dedication to an initiative. This is powerful. Starting something finishing something and going full steam, going full power into the advancement of that. So yes, there were a lot of losses. It really hurts when you release a product or tool or resource and nobody likes it. It breaks my heart. Uh, it, it just does. It's, it, it's so, it feels like you wasted your time. And it feels like you wasted your idea and it, you think, oh, I could have been doing all these other things. So yeah, this has happened a lot, this loss. And really, if you're going to do this, it's a very valuable marketing strategy, but you have to be ready for those losses. You have to be ready to create something, think it's awesome, and it just doesn't get as much traction as you imagined. It's okay. Understand why. And then for the next one, go and make sure that that's better. And that's when we get to learning what people want. You lose, you learn, and then you win. I like that. You lose, you learn, you win. That's a good one. I'm going to get a poster on that. Okay, nice. What else do we have? Bra Trippin, thanks for the honest answer, Joe. Sounds like there was different factors involved when starting out on YouTube. Uh, I don't know exactly what you mean by that. If you follow up, I, I can answer that. Okay, Rohan. Yeah, let's do this. Sign up for our newsletter and you'll get a full list of FinSuite products in the welcome email. So if you are not really sure about all the things that we've done in the past, current and past, sign up for that newsletter. Rohan will share how to do that. And yeah, your first email will be a list of everything that we've created. This is a, a fairly new newsletter initiative we have. So go ahead, check that out and you'll get, this is just a preview. The sites that we looked at in this stream are just a preview of everything that we have done at FinSuite. Okay, Zach Bujasia. Sometimes you learn more from the losses than the wins. It's all good. You know what, Zach? I'm going to say, I think usually 
you learn more from the losses than the wins. I really appreciate this comment. It's a very self-aware type comment. Love it. And I totally agree. Mike Douglas, anything in the works for a paid or free starter cost course to get onboarded with client first and attributes? No. Right now, no. We are finishing up client first V2. We are planning to release it at the end of next week. I forgot that in the announcements. V2 live end of next week. And after that, we're going to work on some education and some some learning around that system. The new docs are very, very complete. So that will be a really good onboarding. But of course, it's 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 almost like a full course. So Mike, stay tuned on that. There may be more coming. Okay, Steve Turnbull. Amazing free resource you offer, but as a business, how dependent are we? For example, if we've built a client site using the FinSuite JavaScript, but then you remove it somehow, how do we deal with that? Yeah, that's that's a concern. I can tell you that we have no plans to remove anything. If anything was previously released and it has a URL and a script, we have no plans to remove that. We already have all of that saved. It's part of our legacy server and you will be yeah, you will be um always serviced in that way. But yeah, this is a serious concern. But you can have this concern with anything, Steve. You can have it with any integration that you choose. And one benefit of, of going with using the FinSuite URL instead of just copying the code to your project is we can also offer updates. Sometimes things change in the web. Sometimes we need to make an update. So by using the FinSuite hosted script, we give you the promise that we're not going to take it offline. And if there's a serious problem, we will address it and we will fix it. This happens, right? You build something four years ago, something on the web changes, and it needs a small update. We can do that for you. So, yep, a concern. Thank you for bringing that up, but we're on it. We, we, are, we hear that and we're, we're not going to hurt you on that. Okay. Ankita, hello. Nice to see you here. Appreciate the hard work that you are doing for the community. It's tough to keep going. You know, it is sometimes tough, but we also love it. I love it. And I, I know that the people that work on these things also love it. So it's hard. It's tough. There's definitely challenges. But if you love it, it should not be a problem. If you don't love creating these resources and creating this content, you may not be in the right industry. So yes, I agree with you, Ankita. This is, it, it requires perseverance. Uh, Josh said that before, but just keep remembering how much you enjoy this industry and it gets a little bit more fun. Okay, we have about 15 minutes left. Uh, let's see what else. John Matias, Joe, I appreciate when you answer no clearly. You are careful to avoid confusing responses. Thank you. I appreciate that. Sometimes I, I, I'm not sure because it's live. You know, if if you're live, there have definitely been times where I've said things that I didn't exactly mean or I wish I could rephrase. But thank you for that. That means I... I guess I'm doing a good job with the nose. Thanks. Josh Lowe, oh, trying to connect with Ada. Great, I love it, we're, we're making meetings. Josh and Ada will have a meeting at the end of the stream. I love it, uh, community involvement, community getting together, absolutely cool. Okay, now let's continue asking questions here. I'm done with the slides. Oh, I wanna share this. I asked on Twitter if there were any projects that people use to help market their business. So Moshfiker uh, responded to this and he posted his UI flow project, which he's been working on, I believe a few years now. It's a really nice project and it helps advertise the agency. So there's inspiration, assets, all curated content, and I think done very well. 
Uh, this just looks like a really nice site to me. And look, it is a personal advertisement. Bam. Give them a follow. Mushfeeker, awesome, and Resat. Cool. So check that out. We'll also share this. I don't know if this is in the notes here. I'll go and share it. Cool. So yes, this is a resource, right? Just curating content. I shouldn't say just curating content, but creating this some type of value to clients. So maybe when a client goes to, to contact them for work, they can say, hey, I have these curated Webflow inspirations and assets. I can create anything that you see in this, this website. And now the client goes, whoa, good attention to detail, good design, um, interesting projects. There's just a little bit more confidence to go and work together. Okay. That's it for the slides. So let's go now to full screen here. And I'm just going to continue out the episode with any QA, any comments. I think this was a really solid episode. I, I think this is something that people should do if they're interested. So if you're thinking about these strategies and saying, hey, I would love to do this ebook thing I thought about a while ago, or I'd love to do this tool that helps you do this thing in Notion, go for it, do it. It's really going to help you long term. And learning what people want, huge part of it. You're going to be a pro once you do that. Okay, let's get into these comments. Zach, Joe's plants are back in the background. I miss them. Yes, I am back home. And I will say it was really nice seeing friends and family, but I, I never felt that I was able to do what I wanted working and traveling. I kind of did like a 50-50 or maybe like a, you know, each day was a little bit different, but it feels so good to be at home with the trees in the background, with the setup. I don't have to worry about the mic placement or the lighting or anything. It's great. So yeah, love being home. Thanks for noticing, Zach. Josh Lowe, thank you. Hit that like button. This was a good one. Yes, if you liked this episode, please give it a thumbs up. This will tell YouTube that you actually like what we're doing here. Uh, that will be very, very helpful. Okay, and what else do we have? Ada, thanks for the follow-up, thinking about the plants. Cool, oh, this is a good one from Arvind. Joe, was going all Webflow dev agency a hard decision? as saying no to money that comes with designing websites isn't easy. Well, great question, Arvind. This is a good one. I'm going to have to take a sip of water before I get into this one. It's a deep one. Okay. It was a hard decision until it wasn't a hard decision. It was something that I was thinking about for months. And then we got screwed on a design project, like really badly screwed. This was just terrible. We lost, we lost money. We didn't, we couldn't deliver the project because of the client's requests. And it was a huge hit for us. So I was thinking about it. It was a hard decision. We got totally screwed and that's it. Then it was an easy decision. Then I said, of course, we're going to do this. This was the decision that we needed all along so that this never happens again. We lost a big design project towards the end of the project because of purely subjective comments from the client. The client loved everything, loved it, loved it, loved it. And then at the end, they decided they hated everything. And we can't tell them they're wrong for hating it, but they did. And they threatened to sue us if we didn't give all the money back terrible stuff. So, so thinking about it turned into absolute and literally within like three or four months, it was clear it was the right decision. Yes, we're giving up money on the branding, giving up money on the design aspect. But if you can do two projects of development in the time of one project for design, well, now this is just a different model. So instead of charging $10 for a design and development, you can charge seven for two developments. 
So now instead of having 10, you have 14 because you can do two developments in the same time as a design and a development. So it's just a different model. I wouldn't call it more or less money. It's just a different way to approach your time, your resources, and your clients. Arvind, if you have a follow-up to that, I'd be happy to answer. Okay, Rohan, how did you get the idea of giving out free re resources as a marketing strategy instead of traditional ads? Well, two reasons. Number one, I had no money. So it's kind of hard to run traditional ads when you just don't have money. I needed clients. I needed a stream of clients. And I mean, spending $20 a week on ads would be something I'd have to really consider. I really didn't have any funds to do that. All I had was my time. So with time, I am able to do anything. I have full control of my time. So I can go and spend hours and hours creating these hacks, hoping that they will work as a marketing strategy. It was not certain that they would work, but I thought that they would because I know that clients need them. I know that other people need them because I need them. And that was clear. I'm going to spend my time marketing instead of spending my money marketing. And when you spend your time on marketing instead of money, it usually becomes off a little bit more honest and a little bit more wholesome. I, there's a better word than that. It's just, it's more honest, right? When you put your time into marketing, instead of just putting an ad that Facebook or Google or someone is going to serve to you when you don't want to see it. So yeah, that's really how it happened. It was kind of a need-based thing. Okay, Pablo Cortez, clonables are a good way to offer free assets as well as a marketing opportunity. I see more and more client-first clonables on the Made in Webflow site. Absolutely. Clients are finding client-first. They're having sites built in client-first. And there's now even job boards in client-first. So if you're a client-first developer and you post something about client first and somebody finds that, they may hire you because they know that you understand the language that their website was built in. So yeah, very valuable. This can really help you get even one new job, right? Just creating one project, few hours, new job. Big win. Dale Jensen, hard decision until it wasn't. I'm sure most folks here can relate in one way or another. But to get there can be a bit of a journey, of course. Yes. Really nice comment. Uh, Hamish, a simple contract with the client can help avoid this situation. You know what, Hamish? There was a contract. And I bet if we took this client to court, we would not have to give the money back. Not worth it. So yeah, it's important to have contracts. You, you should have them. But a lot of times trying to engage in legal battles is just going to be more money than the actual contract is worth. So is it really worth it? In my eyes, absolutely not. We ended that project and we were working on a new one literally the next day. That's how quick we just pivoted. Forget this and we're done. If we had a legal battle, we could still be in that legal battle two and a half years later. So yeah. Contracts work, but nobody wants a legal battle. Okay, Josh Lowe, are there any resources to recommend for running a business? Books, videos, people. Well, Josh, I'm a big fan of doing it and learning. Learning through doing. I don't have any specific books or videos or people for you to follow, but I will say, just do it and watch yourself fail and watch yourself win. And that's going to help you be great at business by doing it and learning and understanding. So that's my recommendation, just do it. And it doesn't matter if you don't know what you're doing either. That's not a problem. You just have to be able to learn and iterate. Okay, Gabe. Great comment. Also getting engagement for giving out value instead of just sitting through an ad is a lot more rewarding for the target demographic. Yes, this gives you the opportunity 
to excite the user. This was the first point of the episode that this base level of creating these resources is to create excitement. It's really hard to create excitement in a paid ad. Google AdWords, Facebook ad, whatever. It's hard to get people excited about that because it's usually not something they want to see. So by getting somebody excited, this is rewarding not only for the creator, but the person viewing it. And that's what we want. We want people to be excited about our business. Okay. Great, Steve Turnbull, we're not 100% Webflow, but all of our Webflow sites use client first. So many pros to this. Awesome, thank you. Uh, this has definitely been a big help for our agency at FinSuite. We use client first now. Of, I mean, of course we use client first, but we use it in a way that everybody can work on the same projects. That if someone's going away for a day or on vacation, someone can jump into their project right away and just continue working on it. So this is really powerful. So I'm, I'm hoping that this is happening to your agency as well, Steve. Okay, Zach, legal battles aren't cheap. Exactly, they're not. And when a legal battle costs more than the disputed amount of the legal battle, it's just not worth it. Now you're wasting your time and you're costing yourself even more money. Okay, Arvin with another Good question. Arvin, come in with the really value questions here. How has your role changed from starting an agency as a freelancer to an agency with 46 people? Would love to know your leadership style. Well, my role has changed from executing on the work to making sure that I can lead other people executing on the work. This is the big jump from freelancer or small agency to large agency. That when you're small, you're probably doing a lot of the work. You may be talking to clients, you may be um, building websites, you may be designing websites, you may be QAing websites, you may be helping with issues that happen in the middle of the night. And that's, that's part of your role. So I was doing a lot of execution earlier in the business. But now that we have 46 people, I can't just spend my time doing work the entire day, like executing on work on work on work. Because if I do that, I won't be able to see the best way for everybody else to work. So right now, what I do is I look at the team, I look at their resources, and I figure out how everybody can be positioned to give the most value to FinSuite as a company. So I'm really trying to lead everybody to do their best work, to build attributes in the best way possible, to build client first in the best way possible, to release the extension updates that you want, to make sure our agency is always give in new leads. Our product and community issues uh, initiatives have given the agency side so many leads, leads and leads and leads. So I'm here making sure that everybody is really just w working to their maximum potential that they want to work. So that is the leadership style. That's the big change, becoming a leader. And my leadership style is, I, I guess I already said it, just giving people the resources and the position to get to that next level in their, in their professional career. And through that, that's going to provide massive value to FinSuite. That's why we have a growing team. We, when we hire people, most people are relatively inexperienced. Relatively inexperienced when you compare to, let's say, a, a funded SaaS company. But everybody is in a position to do great work, to learn and get to that next level. So that's what I'm trying to get everybody to, to get to that next level. And that in turn gets FinSuite to the next level. Arvin, I hope that answered the question. Okay. Oh, great, it's 12 o'clock. Exactly. Thank you all for watching. We have, 
on Thursday. Ben Selinski on Community Day. Ben's going to talk about his career starting in Webflow and where he is today. Uh, really, really impressive advancement and really nice member of the community. On Friday, we're with Alex Iglesias, FinSuite CTO, talking about the Webflow JS file. Every single published Webflow page comes with the Webflow JS file, and we will be going over that file and what it does to your project. Super, super valuable. And then the following Tuesday, we will be live showing social share and query param live builds on Tuesday and the very final update pro meeting tomorrow at 12 Eastern. All right. Have a great day, everybody, and see you soon.